Hi everybody, I'm Trin Johnson and welcome to Dust in My Eye. Today I am exploring collage a little bit. Um, I was inspired by Kosha Kuna's video where she was laying down a whole bunch of different papers on a on a sketchbook page and then later drawing on them. Um, she was doing urban sketching, generally speaking, I think. And I started thinking about applying that kind of thing to a watercolor painting. So I'm going to do some experimenting and I'm going to bring you along. So I have a piece <clears throat> of bee paper and it's 100% cotton. And it's six by nine. And I tried to use scraps that I thought were 100% cotton or at least had a reasonable amount of cotton in them. And I have just torn up some pages. I like to get the deckled edge. These are old paintings that I didn't like, that didn't go well, that I threw in a scrap pile to paint on the back of or experiment on and that's what I am painting on today. So I'm going to just start playing with different placements of these on this paper. Let's see if I can keep that edge I have way more here than I think I want on here. I'm going to stick with the two big ones. And I'm going to leave an edge. I think I'm going to tape my paper down. something like that. Now I have Yes Paste. I'm going to glue it down with this. Um, my sister reminded me the other day that the nice thing about Yes Paste is you can paint on it. So we're going to see if that is um, something that is easy to do. <laughs> so anyway, I got my Yes Paste out and here we go. I tried this with white paper on a white background, which I'll, I'll dig that out and pull it up and stick it in here. And uh, it worked fairly well. I just, you just can't really see. Got a little board over here that I can paste on. You can't really see the, um, the edges really easily because it was all white and, and it's more of a textural difference, that one, because um, I used all different textures of watercolor paper. And I like the way it turned out, but it's, it's I'd like it to read more what was underneath. So I was talking to one of my students in my watercolor class and she recommended using the side of the paper that was already painted on and I thought well that could be fun so that's what I am going to experiment with here and when I did my other one I um, 
painted the backyard because that was what I was looking at out the window. And so I just was trying to experiment with it and I didn't want to like think real hard and go find some reference um, material, painting, picture, you know, photo. I thought I'll just I'll just paint what I see right now, which was my backyard. And uh, <clears throat> so I might think about that a little harder this time. <laughs> and just and and being that I'm not starting with an all white background, um, that might influence what kind of thing I do on it. Also, it had snowed, so my all white background worked with the white foreground <laughs> of uh, all the snow that was in our yard. Now I'm going to have to wait for this to dry. before I can paint. So, oops, I want that on top. I want that echoing. I know that's not how I had it on there, but that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> See, it's popping up. I used a glue stick when I did it before. And, uh, the glue stick worked well, but you can't paint really over anything that seeps out, so I thought I would give this a try. And I think what I'm going to do is put something heavy on this and let it all dry, and then I will come back. So I decided that the the yes paste worked fine. It just was harder to get it to stick down, oddly enough, because um, glue sticks are notorious for being a pain in that department. But this one works pretty well and I, I've always had good luck with it. I have some bigger ones of them too. They're just hard to get. You have to get them on Amazon. Um, at least in the states where I am in Michigan so I can't find it locally. Um, but I ended up using a little bit of that for little edges. I don't know why. It just, I was having trouble getting the Yes Paste to stick. Um, so I think either would work. Um, I'm sure Elmer's would work. Tacky glue would work. You just don't want it to eke out where you can't paint on it. So I have a picture, um, a photo that I am using from the Every Artist Reference Library group on Facebook. So um, I cannot show it to you, but uh, I can link the group in my um, description. And uh, I am just going to sketch this in roughly. <laughs> with a watercolor pencil. What I wanted to do was ignore, and it's hard, what's going on already. I just wanted to see how that would work if I just pretend it's not crazy.
So I'm going to tape this down and uh, paint. I think I'm going to readjust my camera so I can get a little more space on my right hand side here. So bear with me. Okay, I've moved it over and I am just going to tape it down. I like to use medical tape. It has worked really well for me. Somebody recommended it on some, I think it was on a Facebook group I belong to. And uh, I have found it works pretty well. I don't have a lot of leaks. It holds up pretty well. Relatively inexpensive, nice and portable. It's not blue. <laughs> not that the blue is unusable. I just don't particularly care for the bright blue in my face while I'm painting. There we go. Okay. So since I am doing this for my watercolor class, I'm going to try to stick to Predominantly watercolors, I might go into um, colored pencils or, or watercolor pencils. I don't know. This is all one big experiment. And I am going to start with my favorite brush in general. It is a Princeton Neptune Quill number eight. So... I like quills. And I think I'm going to start with the sky. So I am going to stop talking and I might speed this up a little bit. So we're not here all day. And I might come in with a comet or two.
Okay, now I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer and then I'm going to get out a pen and maybe some pencils. So when I did that, the glue could not handle the curl of the paper. So uh, I'm gonna have to come back in here <laughs> and re-glue some of this. It's just a little on the tricky side. And I probably will need to um, put some weight on it again. And try and see if I can flatten it. And get this to stick again. So oh, it's a little flatter. I'm going to probably put it under something when I'm done, but I want to go on. So I got out my ink tense pencils and I'm going to do a little fooling around with those. Let's see if I can get this more to my liking. Okay, I have to say when I started painting on this, I thought, oh, this is a train wreck and I'm just, why am I doing this? But in the end, once I threw some colored pencil on it and got further on it, I kind of like it. It's different. I think in the future, I might try this again. Um, I might try this again on this video with not using as dark of papers. Be a little more conscious of the colors 
that are on the paper I'm using. Um, stay away from really dark things, really um, bright things. So, so you're not fighting it as much. But I, it's hard to ignore what is going on in the background and just paint like it wasn't there. And it's kind of a fun exercise. So um, I'm going to take the tape off and we might try this again. Okay, so I have a new picture that I'm painting from, and I did another smaller collage, used lighter scraps of paper in my collage, and uh, then I sketched on my what I want to paint. I think I would like to put just one more piece on there, so... Bear with me while I find something that I can use. In coming back and looking at it, I, I think it looks kind of choppy. So I want something that connects it in this corner. Um, I, think, I think I might actually cut it because I think that's what I would like to see. It really has nothing to do with the picture I've got on it. It's got more to do with um, just the general shape of these papers that I have stuck on there. So I'm going to glue this one down. Hopefully by the time I'm down there, it will be dry and not a problem. Okay. So I am once again going to start with the sky. This time I think I'm going to do wet on wet though. You do have to remember, oh, I did not do what's over here. You do have to remember that this is watercolor paper with watercolors on it and it will pick up. So you don't want to do a lot of like back and forth or you're going to catch whatever color is on that paper already. And if that's what you want, that's fine. But if you don't want that, just be wary that you have to be wary of it. It's coming right there. I'm thinking about glue on that. There we go. There, I'm, there are no rules in this um, method. <laughs> Considering that I'm just kind of fooling around. Just trying to see if this could be kind of fun. Don't fight what's there because that's that's what we're the interest is that you've already got these interesting shapes going on. So uh, try not to let them throw you. If I did not have this stuck down, I would probably pick up my paper and let the color drip down towards, you know, gradually make its way down in some respects, but not worth untaping my paper and 
not while I'm taping, not while I'm recording, let's put it that way. <laughs>
Okay, I think I am going to dry this and do some colored pencil work on top. Okay, I'm going to peel the tape. This was a little easier. I wasn't fighting my background choices. I still didn't let them dictate what I did, but I did lighten that yellow one a little bit for the cloud um, with a little bit of white gouache in the end. But there's no rules, so that can work. So there's that, and let me pull the other one out. So these are the three that I did. This one, I wasn't working, worrying so much about what was on the paper I was putting down for my collage. This one I went with lighter paper, and this one I went with white, and it's, uh, you can see it, it's more of a textural thing. It's harder to see on camera probably what the differences are, but you can see the torn edges that are here. And uh, they were all fun. All had their different challenges and uh, I would say that that was the hardest to do but I, I do kind of like how it looks in the end so I don't know I I don't know I might play with this again sometime. It was a good way to use um, scrap paper and uh, old, old paper that you weren't happy with what you did on it, but it was good paper and you didn't really want to throw it away. Um, it's kind of a fun way to utilize that. Um, I can see the, the, the point of doing it um, on a sketchbook and, and then going out and doing plein air or such on it that that was that I can see how that would be kind of fun um in some ways I think doing landscapes on it 
um, made it a little bit harder than buildings and urban sketching and and um, marker work. And I could come in here with marker work and and do some um, ink on it, not just colored pencil. But right now, I think I'm leaving it as it is. I hope you enjoyed this weird conglomeration of a, a video and uh, with paper and collaged pieces. If you got anything out of it, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit the cute little bell. And uh, if you would like to, I would love it if you could check out my Etsy shop where I have prints of my artwork along with some originals and my cute little tins and cute little monsters for sale. Until next time, thanks so much for watching.